Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The International Air Transport Association held its annual media day in December, where the association highlighted safety and security as top priorities for the global air transport industry, even though the sector continues to be plagued by the threat of terrorism, among several other safety and security risks. Crema Media Senior Deputy Editor Keith Campbell was at the conference, which took place in Geneva, Switzerland. He joins me now. Welcome, Keith. Um, Keith, tell me more about this yearly get-together. Well, it's the annual uh, global media briefing of the International Air Transport Association held in Geneva. Held at Geneva Airport, the IATA head office is right next to the airport with a great view over the runways. Um, and they take this opportunity to brief the international media about the latest developments in the air transport industry and the programs that they're pursuing, the initiatives they're developing, uh, the uh, matters such as safety, security, uh, air cargo, uh, passenger numbers, you know, just about everything. Uh, including, uh, for example, uh, the attempts by the association and airlines to help fight against uh, illegal wildlife trade and poaching. So it covers a very, very wide spectrum of uh, commercial aviation uh, matters and affairs. And what were some of the main safety concerns that were raised at this conference? Well, the first thing to remind everyone is that uh, aviation Commercial aviation is the safest long distance transport means ever developed. Um, every day on average, 100,000 commercial aviation flights take place, carrying about a million passengers and 150,000 tons of cargo over something like 54,000 routes. Now, 2014 was the safest year in commercial aviation history. Uh, th that year experienced what is called a jet hull loss rate. That is where a jet airliner is completely written off. Um, a jet hull loss rate of 0 0.23 per million sectors. A sector is a flight. Johannesburg, London is a sector. Johannesburg, Cape Town is a sector. So l a less than a quarter uh, of a airline, jet airliner was written off every million flights in 2014. Unfortunately, in 2015, uh, it looks like the figure is going to be slightly higher. Although, strikingly, in the first six months of last year, uh, IATA member airlines, and there are 260 member airlines of IATA, uh, suffered four jet hull losses, but not one single fatality in those four accidents. Now, safety concerns. Recent developments have been recent developments. There's been the mysterious disappearance of Malaysian Airlines flight MH370. Uh, back in 2014, uh, which raised the issue of airliner tracking. Now, this is a big program, a big international program, involves IATA, it involves the International Civil Aviation Organization, which is a specialist agency of the United Nations and represents governments, it involves airlines, and they have been working together to develop a global uh, means of tracking airliners continually. And they have been doing exercises and tests. And as a result of this, they realized that their original hopes to introduce a global uh, airliner tracking system this year are not practical. And uh, the, such a system will have to wait till 2018. However, individual airlines are moving forward as fast as they can, as fast as they can afford to install equipment and bring systems uh, into operation. But Hopefully by 2018, it will cease to be possible for an airliner just to disappear. Uh, 
There are other safety issues which people generally don't think of. Uh, there is, uh, for example, a lot of new consumer products, things like hoverboards and various other uh, devices like that. Many of these are powered by lithium ion batteries. But the lithium ion batteries in these transport devices, which are classified legally as personal consumer electronics, are not manufactured to the same standards of the, as the lithium ion batteries that are in your cell phone, your laptop, your tablet. And there have been cases of some of these things going in fire. Now, airplanes are inflammable. The alloys uh, that airplanes are made of have to be strong and light. And the way it has worked out in terms of the, of the uh, nature of the materials that provide strength and lightness, like aluminum lithium alloy, well, lithium burns and aluminum melts. So a fire on an airplane is incredibly dangerous. It's like having a fire on a wooden ship. It is really dangerous. And these things are potentially lethal threats, whether they are in the cargo hold or they're stuck in the overhead baggage compartment uh, above a passenger seat. So that's a concern. So they're working on this. They want the manufacturers to realize the danger there and the airports to realize the danger, uh, potential danger posed by these things. Uh, another concern. Uh, uh, is, of course, highlighted by the dreadful uh, events last year when the German Wings A320 uh, or A321 airliner was purposely crashed by its co-pilot, is the question of the mental health and the emotional well-being of pilots. Since 1980, it's believed that there have been eight actual or suspected cases of murder-suicide by pilots flying the aircraft purposely into the ground to kill themselves and killing all the passengers as well. So that's a big concern. Uh, this is uh, being subject uh, to investigation, uh, for example, by the European uh, Aviation Authorities and the American Federal Aviation Administration and various recommendations have been made about what to do to uh, strengthen safeguards uh, in this area. So those are some of the safety aspects that are under, uh, under consideration at the moment. Um, in terms of security, what are the other to highlight? Well, there are a number of things. There are two very obvious ones. Uh, terrorism. Again, brought to the fore by the destruction of the Metrojet airliner uh, um, after it took off from Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt uh, late last year. Uh, a separate terrorism-related concern is the use of commercial aviation uh, by supporters and members of the so-called Islamic State, either to get to the Middle East, where they then infiltrate into Syria or Iraq to join the movement, or to exfiltrate from the Middle East to go uh, to set up uh, cells in other countries later to carry out terrorist attacks. Uh, so those are two closely related concerns. Um, the, the question, of course, is uh, maintaining security at airports uh, to guard against the risks of bombs getting on aircraft. And in terms of uh, related to that, and also in terms of uh, terrorists traveling who have no intention of destroying the aircraft, they're actually using it like normal passengers to get from A to B. Uh, there are uh, two systems that are used to try and identify and track people uh, and their uh, travel history. The trouble with uh, uh, these systems can be very useful. The trouble is different countries use different standards. And IATA has, and 
with ICAO, that's the International Civil Aviation Organization, and the World Customs Union. The three of them have got together and they've developed a uniform standard which they are urging all countries of the world to adopt. Because if different countries have different standards, it can uh, it undermines the, the effectiveness of the whole system. There are other problems, for example, uh, country A's regulations might break country B's laws. If the airline is flying from A to B, it finds itself in the impossible position. If it abides by B's laws, it breaks the law in A. If it abides by A's laws, it breaks the law in B. It's breaking the law. So uh, IATA, uh, along with ICAO and the World Customs Union, is urging countries to adopt this common standard. The but there are other, uh, two other big security issues. Uh, one, cyber security. Uh, concern about hackers, malicious hackers breaking into airline systems. Airlines are very heavy, the aviation industry is very, very heavily dependent on, cube, uh, on computers and the internet. Uh, so hackers can cause damage in passenger booking, uh, they can cause uh, all sorts of potentially havoc in ordering spare parts. The um, avionics and uh, aircraft manufacturers are very aware uh, of the potential, theoretical potential at the moment, to hack into aircraft flight control systems. And they already build in protections to guard against this. But that is recognized as a potential threat. But the, the, there's a lot of problems that can be done that can cost airlines money, that can cost passengers a lot of uh, unpleasant experience, et cetera, from potentially from hacking. So uh, cyber security is a big concern. The final security threat uh, was brought into great prominence, of course, with the destruction of Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 shot down by surface to a missile over eastern Ukraine in 2014. And the Dutch safety, uh, Aviation Safety Agency recently report, um, in October published its report on that, confirming it was shot down by radar guided service to a missile. Now, the airspace through which the airliner had been traveling had not been declared to be dangerous. And no airline had been warned to avoid it. No airline had been forbidden to use that airspace. It is not unusual for airlines to fly over territories in civil conflict because the vast majority of these conflicts, uh, the combatants do not have any weapons that can threaten an airliner at cruise altitude. The most likely threat uh, would be an infrared homing uh, surface missile fired, uh, a man portable missile fired from the shoulder. Those have a maximum altitude of about 3,000 meters. Airliners normally cruise around 10,000 meters. Anti aircraft guns have even shorter ranges than that. But this uh, MH17 was hit by a radar guided missile, which is a whole different ball game. Those are designed to go much further, much higher because they're designed to engage fast military jets, which can often operate at 20,000 meters and higher. So IATA was strongly urging governments to be more active in warning airliners of airlines of such threats, because they point out that no airline and the associate itself can possibly, they don't have the resources, gather and analyze intelligence to make such determinations and issue such warnings. So a strong call to governments to actively warn airliners of real danger zones and to ban airlines from flying in those danger zones instead of not, uh, not thinking of alerting them to the threat. Thank you, Keith. That's the second psych show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.